Hello, this is a mathematical demonstration using GeoGebra dynamic worksheets to explain how exponential and logarithmic functions work. We're going to start first with exponential. So we have an exponential function in this form. Uh, we can see here that we have four different parameters. And A is multiplying this, B is the base, x minus c is the exponent and then d is an independent term so let's see what these numbers do we need to change uh, three and we need to change a b c and d and we need to give them three values each and then write down in an investigation log um, what that does to the curve the exponential curve so a for example as we move it up we can see that we're just multiplying the um, um, exponential okay and we can see how it does uh, please note how a makes this um, um, point and this point different remember that these are the axis intercepts okay now b is going to be the base as we can see once uh, b increases then the um, slope of the um, uh, curve is um, much bigger increases eventually if b equals one it's a straight line which makes sense okay it's a horizontal straight line if b is negative uh, we can see that the function decreases okay so this was um, exponential exponential de decay and the other one was exponential growth yeah so increasing decreasing now C is going to be easier for us to adjust. We can see that the whole thing moves horizontally. And D also very easy. The whole thing moves up and down. Okay. You might want to set up values of D, for example, 0, and C the same, C0, and before you start um, changing the values of a or even B uh, this might make things easier okay um, but that is up to you a for example I guess you can set it up to one and then change B for example now we can also have um, other investigations in the yellow part we have a um, um, vector V that has coordinates a and B we can see here the vector and what we're doing is we are translating translating the uh, whole uh, curve by this vector so this is easy now uh, we change the value of a so that's the x coordinate of the vector and obviously uh, the yellow curve moves right and left b uh, same thing with this yeah up and down we need to do three different values of each finally the green part of the investigation we now have two parameters p and q and uh, what they do is they transform the function this way so q is multiplying x p is multiplying the whole function and then um, um, we can see here how this green curve um, is affected um, obviously if p has negative values the whole thing is negative but then when it has positive values we can kind of like stretch it that way in the y-axis and then the same thing as it goes for the um, x-axis and it can also be negative okay uh, but this is all for the exponential functions so for the logarithmic functions we're going to do something similar we have a um, function in this form um, so it's the logarithm in base a of all of these um, and then we can obviously change the, these values here so we can see what happens when uh, we change a okay uh, remember that a is the base of the logarithm if um, the uh, base of the logarithm eventually is stretched to one um, then you know something is happening you need to write that down and what is happening when eventually we have uh, um, values of the base that are bigger than one look at what happens um, same thing for um, small values uh, what happens when the base is uh, zero 
and uh, what happens if there are negative values okay okay and remember the um, domain of the logarithms so you need to write these things down in your investigation log now b um, b um, we can see here that is multiplying um, the x minus c factor okay c is going to be easy because all that we're doing is we're moving horizontally and same for d but vertically okay and then again you might want to set the values of uh, c and d uh, to zero probably so that um, you um, can investigate the others um, more easily okay uh, uh, even even better you might want to set up um, b to be one uh, when you are investigating a that could be um, interesting okay um, to do yeah, remember it can have positive values can have negative values and uh, sorry can have positive values it can have values uh, between zero and one and values over one I mean okay that's all now same thing for the um, yellow part so we have a vector that has coordinates a and b and this is how it gets translated and this is the easy part we can just see how it gets translated horizontally and vertically and then same things for the green part we have two factors p and q and they are stretching the x sorry the y first and the x-axis the q because it's multiplying times x okay and that's all for now thank you